Let's go fall through the ice because, you know, why not? I've already seen open water a couple places. You can see the tracks here where somebody drove their four-wheeler out and then turned around because they looked up here and it's pretty obvious. There's open water there and there's really dark ice here. There's open water there, back there. I'm gonna see how close I can get before I actually go through because the ice gives out. So I've been out here in the summer, so I know that this is deeper than I am tall, plus it's really mushy on the bottom. So when starting to adventure outdoors, each high adventure activity either seemed super risky or very safe, and it really depended on my knowledge and experience. And so the real truth was that the perceived or actual risks were very different. So every day we strap a seatbelt on and drive a car and we think it's safe because the seatbelt is going to save us, whereas falling through the ice seems kind of suicidal. We know that cars are one of the biggest killers. I mean, look up the statistics. Let's just go test out how dangerous it is to fall through the ice. So I've got my khaki pants and a lightweight shirt and some neoprene gloves, so I guess I'm ready to go. <laughs> oh, here we go. Not very good ice, I'll tell you that. Here's the moment. Woo! Oh, well, I definitely didn't touch the bottom. So I often talk about the knowledge, the skills, and the equipment to keep yourself safe. And why am I doing this sort of thing? Because practice and being comfortable in this sort of situation goes a long way to staying safe when this sort of thing arises without expectation. Whew. Okay, it's a little chilly, especially on the feet. So while I'm in here, I might as well show you some techniques for getting out. Technique one. If you walked here, you know that the ice was holding you until this point. So you want to get back out the way that you got in. Don't go further. Turn around and go back the way you came from. And you're going to try to get your body really horizontal. So kick your legs back. You can even put them up on the ice like this or under the ice. And you're going to kind of do a arm over arm this army crawl, but keep your legs up, right? <laughs> and slowly get out that way, which is hard with rubber boots full of water. If that doesn't work, I've got something else. Here's the second tip. I came prepared by putting some ice picks around my neck and into my pants pockets. I prefer these ones with the retractable cover that when you push it down shows a spike and you can just jab them into the ice. You still want to get your feet up, but it gives you a lot more grip to jab in and pull yourself out. These work really well. I'll link to them in the description if you're interested in picking up some of these. <laughs> Swamp water. Here, I'll show you this way. Look what I found in the hole with me. Some uh, cattail root. Oh, I'll have to hose off later. The other equipment I haven't showed you, it's hiding in plain sight. <laughs> There's a few other things that determine how safe or dangerous this will be when you're practicing for worst case. So one of those is flow. You never want to do this on a river or anywhere where there's any significant flow. Here, it's basically a long skinny lake with an outlet. And so I'm not worried about getting swept under the ice, which would just be horrific. You don't wanna even risk that. Next, you wanna think about temperature. How cold is it when you're doing it? Right now, it's like 40 something. So yes, it's cold. My feet are numb, but I know that I'm not going to get frostbite and I'm not going to get hypothermia either because, well, I'll show you in a second. Next, it's really nice to have some dry, warm gear when you uh, get back or when you're you know, at the end of the lake or whatever. The other thing to do is to wear a personal flotation device and bring somebody else with you who has a throw rope. 
All right, so now comes the part where I prove I'm maybe not as dumb as I might look by coming out into a lake and falling into the ice on purpose. So underneath this uh, lightweight shirt and under my khaki pants, <laughs> it's actually a dry suit. So like I said, come prepared and don't regret it later. I do have neoprene boots that I wish I wore because these are pretty cold because <laughs> it's just socks for insulation, which doesn't really do a whole lot. I just wanted it to look more like street clothes. Well, I'm out here already, so I might as well just, you know, keep falling in wherever it happens. It could happen at any moment. Oh, I felt it give away there. Who knows? Oh, that just slammed on the ice. Yep, that's fun. I better go home. My feet are like numb. Anyway, comment if you uh, try this up. <laughs> so you tell me, is it safe to fall through the ice if you're prepared like I was? Comment below. It's better than I thought. Oh, ah! That's like a brand new experience every time. If you've enjoyed this, go ahead and give it a like. If you're interested in getting lost on purpose, then check out the video up here. If you prefer something different, check the link up here. And if you're interested in seeing more inspiring adventures and tips to help make them safer for yourself, then consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Back to warmth. Ah, you gotta warm up. <laughs> <laughs>